Today we are celebrating the opening of the Sastrara on this day. I must say it was a great happening <coughs> that took place for all the humanity. It was such an achievement which I never realized before. Now I can see that without Self-realization, it would have been impossible to talk to people. <clears throat> when this happened, I thought that, how will I talk to people about it? Because no one would understand me. <clears throat> and uh, it would be a big mistake on my part to say something about Sastara <clears throat> because even about Sastara, nowhere in the scriptures some things were described. It was absolutely a ambiguous description, I would say, where people could not have even thought that there is a realm beyond Sastrara. <coughs> and one has to enter into that realm where is the reality. That time what I saw around me I felt it's all darkness and unless and until there are many lights, people will never realize that how important it is to have lights. <coughs> it is a human error also all the time that if somebody achieves something, then they put that person onto a shelf. For example, Christ, all right, he was Christ, we are not Christ. Muhammad Sahib, he was Muhammad Sahib, we are not Muhammad Sahib. Rama was Rama, Krishna was Krishna. We are not that. Uh, how can you expect human beings to behave like them? So, absolutely they are separated. The Divine Personalities away, very much away, from human personality. It was just a <coughs> adoration, I can say, faith, but when they said we try to follow them, they could not. They could not follow them because I think human movement is on parallel lines with the Divine. And these lines do not meet. Unless and until you give them Self-realization. Human level is moving on a, another plane and it has to come up to a higher plane to understand that what they know is not reality. <coughs> I wouldn't say what is needed for that because in my own experience all kinds of people came to Sajaka. There are people described to be very bad, cruel, another ones who were very licentious, this, that, then another ones who were cheats and they said, Mother, they are horrible people. But I've seen that Every human being is as if made of the same character as far as the spirit is concerned. Outside they may be different to look at, their way of talking may be different, their styles may be different, their fondness for things may be different. But inside they are all very beautiful. 
And this I found out one after another. You don't know how much it was giving me joy, not only joy but also encouragement, support and patience. <coughs> and then now you see how Sahaja Yoga has grown. The greatest thing has now happened is, which I realize, I'm very happy about it, that Sahaja Yogis feel very responsible about Sahaja Yoga. And they feel that they have to spread this enlightenment everywhere. It's their innate desire now to spread Sahaja Yoga. Firstly it was that they should become spirits. Before that also there were some people who didn't actually seek the Spirit, but they also became Sahaja Yogis. And I'm surprised with some of you that I never expected that they would go so far and suddenly you hear that such and such person has gone there, has done this, has done this. So when you came into the realm of reality, I don't know which principle you accepted first, that's your understanding. But one thing you realized that you are definitely connected with the Divine. Some people had ter ter tremendous experiences, some had mild experiences. But most of them, I saw, started believing in themselves, understanding themselves and having confidence about themselves. Because there are so many myths about God, religion, gurus, that <coughs> when they saw the light of the Spirit which gave them sense of reality, they, as if they steadied their mind, they steadied themselves. All this happened, I must say, in a very short time. I didn't say that it took me long or I had to go through lots of various experiences, because to me all these experiences are nothing. If a ship is seaworthy, it can face all kinds of uh, high tides and all kinds of sharks and everything without any difficulty, because it is seaworthy. So I didn't feel that way, but only I felt that from human level to this spiritual level, to this Divine level. <coughs> when you are coming, then some of that still lingers on, some of that is still there. It has to be cleansed, it has to be brightened, we should say, or absolutely enlightened. But <coughs> what was the great thing about Sahaja Yoga that you yourself did all that? It's nice to say, Mother, you did this, you did that. Maybe enlightenment part of it. But say now there are lights here, and these lights, unless and until they are attended to, looked after, and given oil of love, how can they go on burning? This is something what I must say that you people somehow or other realized how important it was to become good surgeries. <coughs> maybe introspection, I don't say, maybe somebody else talked about it, 
maybe it's your own understanding. Whatever it was, all of you tried to be good surgeons. Of course, there are people who are <coughs> sometimes very angry with me, uh, like, why don't you cure my sister or why don't you cure my father? If you are God, this, that, is that. But makes no difference to me because they are so frustrated, so upset, so they are talking like that. If you see one or two persons here and there, you see here thousands, such beautiful people, it's complete emancipation of this earth, of this globe, <coughs> I'm sure will take place if you people all take up the responsibility. The responsibility has certain problems which we should know. <coughs> when you feel responsible, you must know that you are not in charge, one thing. Secondly, you also must know that there are so many other forces, so many angels and ganas are with you. You are not alone. So, to think that you are doing anything will make you maybe egoistic. At that time, what you have to do is best is to say, all right, I am not doing anything, it's the Divine that is working it out. Not that the Divine wants any credit from you, but by saying that, this balloon of ego will not come up and you will become humble. And this humility will definitely improve this great tree of spirituality within you. Definitely it will make you a very <coughs> evolved personality, no doubt about it. But first of all, we have to say, I am not doing anything. It's very important to understand when you have spiritual authority to do things. It is not a testing ground, I can tell you this much. Many people think <coughs> that Mother is testing us. I am not testing, you are testing yourself. I am not saying don't do this or don't do that. You are testing yourself and now must know that you are in the beautiful garden of reality, <coughs> where very few have entered. <coughs> and there in that garden when you enter, what do you see is everything is full of beauty. Every person has something sweet about himself. Because all other Sahajogis are also having the same kind of experiences of this reality, which cannot be described in words, but you start feeling it, that oneness, that nearness, that friendship, <coughs> without any expectation. You start feeling, oh, it's a Sahaja Yogi, a kind of a complete integrated organism, organism as you become, become an organization, I should say, which is a living organization. In that you do not feel you are something separate. 
any such yogi, <coughs> whether he is highly placed or he is not doing much in life, <coughs> this integration, this oneness, this feeling of identification with others makes you so large, so big, so great, so powerful. You are not alone and you say, I am not doing anything. <coughs> so you become so humble that you forget all these false ideas about class consciousness or religion consciousness or, uh, I don't know, all sorts of consciousness people. I don't know much about these consciousnesses that human beings suffer from, <laughs> but I've seen how it happens. <coughs> and when that humility becomes your character, not that you are humble because uh, there's something to be done, you are humble. When people are doing some sort of, say, business, They'll be extremely humble and nice, but they'll be very unkind otherwise. Here then you become absolutely humble, and there's no duality in your personality left. <coughs> but that doesn't mean you become weak. Humility is only possible for people who are strong, because they don't need any reactions, they don't need any protection. Their humility keeps them protected also very much. So you just start thinking or feeling, thinking is a funny word, feeling that you are a small dust particle. At the same time you feel you are the whole sky. It depends on when you are, what you are doing, what you are seeing, what you are witnessing. Sometimes you feel <coughs> that uh, all these big, big journeys are useless. You feel nothing to worry about them, very small. And with some people you feel you are very small. Such a flexible temperament you developed, and that makes you subtler and subtler, because you can penetrate into anything, any subject, any personality, any understanding, any book, anything, any enterprise, in a very subtle manner, and you immediately see what is to be done, because you become so subtle. <coughs> and then when you become very great, then you start thinking, or I should say feeling, what you can do to help so many people, to do this great job, to do that. <coughs> this when happens to you, they don't think <coughs> that you are egoistical, nor you should think that you are very small. Only thing is now you are the Spirit. <coughs> and Spirit is very subtle, it's a very subtle light, but it can penetrate into anything, it could expand into anything. It can remain anywhere or it can disappear anywhere. This subtle personality that you are, 
which is your spirit. <coughs> you even don't use it, but it uses you all the time. Without your knowledge, it uses you. 